Yeah, it's uh, an interesting turn of events. California has become a strange new place. Yes, it has. Almost unrecognizable. <laughs> yes. Well, it'd be recognizable to George Orwell. Well, yeah, right? Even he probably been like, wow. He, he was probably, if, if you could get George Orwell from, you know, the time he wrote 1980, when did he write 84? Oh, that's pretty good. I, I don't know. I think it was the late 40s. We can look it up. And then to see, uh, the, you know, in 2022, he was, he was in the neighborhood. He, he definitely was pretty close. He was off like 1.2%. <laughs> there it is, 49. Yeah. Wow, interesting. That was Joe Rogan and his guest, David Mamet, unironically claiming that California is just like George Orwell's 1984. Now, keep in mind that they say this in the great state of Texas, where in the year 2022, women have to resort to back alley abortions with coat hangers again. And if you're a parent with a trans child, well, the state's attorney general will investigate you as if you're a child abuser if you seek out gender affirming health care for your child. What about parental rights? Isn't that something that Joe Rogan is concerned about? He's talked about that. But yet, all of a sudden, parental rights bad. But yet, it's California. They're the ones who are very Orwellian. Now, uh, if you're wondering why they think that California and not states like Texas or Tennessee, where they're trying to legalize child marriage, is more Orwellian, uh, ask yourself why. Just take a guess. Because California has become too woke, and also uh, something, something, COVID lockdown restrictions are bad. But I'm not sure if Joe Rogan and his guests got the good news, but California has virtually lifted all restrictions with regard to COVID-19. You're free now, Joe. You can spread your wings and fly. You can do whatever you want. You can breathe on people again, Joe. Now, we all know that the hallmark of the totalitarian regime in George Orwell's 1984 is that the uh, regime relinquishes power after they impose restrictions on citizens. We all know that that, you know, definitely what the regime that's very totalitarian and Orwellian would do. I, I just, I, I don't understand. It's like they're trying to break my brain because I'm trying to figure out what their logic is, but there is none. And that's, that's basically what you have to take away from this. It's a black hole of knowledge and information. And if you try to analyze what they're saying, You'll just get sucked in and lose IQ points. Now, if you think I'm joking, uh, so David Mamet took things even further. And here's what he says about the COVID lockdown and the left, more generally speaking. This is according to Mediaite. After discussing COVID-19 era lockdowns and woke ideologies being pushed like a cult-like religion, Mamet also declared the left to be a death cult. It's a death cult. It's a cult about death, the Glen Gary Glenn Ross writer said, going on to call out climate change alarmists with growing carbon footprints, as well as the idea that there was no such thing as men and women, to which Rogan pushed back, saying many are argue the terms are simply flexible. So I don't honestly understand the point that he's making here, and I don't think that even he understands the point that he's trying to make here. The left is a death cult, but he condemns climate alarmists. But the people who want to stop anthropogenic climate change, they're the death cult. Wouldn't the death cult be the people who aren't taking climate change seriously, given the threat that it poses to our species? Wouldn't that be the death cult? This is a conservative, so wouldn't the death cult be the side of the political aisle that is basically fully anti-vax at this point. I mean, not every conservative is anti-vax, but how many conservatives have we seen refuse a safe and effective vaccine? They've basically chosen to die instead, and they've opted for ivermectin in lieu of the vaccine. Isn't that the death cult? But no, the left is the death cult because they are worried about climate change. Okay. <laughs> It's so brain dead, I can't even respond to it with a logical follow-up. I can't, you know, supplement what they're saying with commentary. I, I just have to laugh at them. Uh, but speaking of laughing at them, so David Mamet had some really good news that I had not yet heard about, and I'm sure that you haven't heard about this either. Take a look. I'm a child of the mid-century, you know, my dads and my uncles, everybody I knew went through the war. My grandfather fought in World War I. I've made a living when I should have been in jail, right, or homeless because I don't have any talents except writing. And because I could do that, I made a living, I have a wonderful family because of America. 
right? That, that And I'm a Jew and I'm not getting killed because I live in America. And I saw the country transform when I was a kid. And I used to go down south and there were chain gangs and there were lynchings and there were separate. That's pretty gosh darn close. And those people who were that being treated that way, their great grandparents had been slaves. And now we see that racism is in effect gone. There's certain prejudices of whites against blacks. Well, duh. There's certain prejudices of blacks against whites. But it's gone. We see that gays who were committed suicide or lived their life in terror or were blacklisted or um, are now normalized. These are wonderful things. Mm -hmm. This is a magnificent country that we live in. And to see it go to in front of my eyes where half, half the country said, you know what? No, I, I'm not ready to die yet. I'm not going to submit to the death cult. Okay, so the people who have refused to submit to the death cult, these are the anti-vaxxers and the climate change deniers? I'm just trying to figure this out. But also, um, he says racism is gone. It's gone. Great. I, I did not know that this happened. I don't know when it happened in particular, but this is really great news. I'm sure that this old white boomer definitely knows whether or not racism still exists. He can tell us for sure. And also, you know, uh, being gay now is more normalized. He says this while his party and his movement are actively reviving the gays are pedophiles trope again, where they're claiming Disney is groomers because they're putting LGBTQ plus representation in television shows and movies. But wait, you just said it's normalized. Now, he also adds, and I transcribed this so as to not misrepresent what he's saying, quote, this is a magnificent country we live in, and to see it go to shit in front of my eyes, half the country said, you know what? No, I'm not ready to die yet. I'm not going to submit to the death cult. Now, I have no fucking idea what that means, and I think that it will take scientists centuries to decode what he's trying to say here. I don't even think he knows what he's saying. Um, but it, it's weird because on one hand, he implies that America is magnificent because we've come so far with regard to race relations, but yet you have part of the country saying, no, we shouldn't make more progress, and you're aligned with them, so I, I just, I don't understand. Is progress good or bad? Because you imply progress is good, but further progress is bad. If it's logical to say, well, you know what? I'm glad that we've come far with regard to, you know, how we treat people of color. And you think that now looking back on it, you know, it's bad the way that you treated them. Don't you think that maybe in the future, a few decades from now, you can imagine a situation where people will look back at the way that you talk about transgender people? Maybe history will look at you and think, wow, the way they treated transgender people is the same way they treated other marginalized communities in the past. Don't you think it's possible that you're on the wrong side of history now and we should keep pushing for further progress? I don't think he could answer this question because I don't think that he's thought about any of this at all. Now, you've probably been wondering throughout the course of this entire video, did Joe Rogan just bring this guy on to make himself look smart? Because if he did, it's kind of working. Because, you know, every time I hear Joe Rogan open his mouth, he usually says some dumb reactionary bullshit. But if this were a competition to see to see who could say the dumbest shit, David won there. Joe Rogan actually lost. But that's not to say that Joe Rogan didn't chime in with some stupidity. Joe Rogan said, quote, when the whole George Floyd thing happened, one of the schools that my kids were going to back in California released this email saying that it's not enough to not be racist. You now must be anti-racist. And my kid's nine at the time. What does that mean? Rogan said at one point during a conversation that covered everything from transgenderism to religion in modern society. First of all, that email was meant for you and not your kids. Second of all, do you really not know what anti-racism means and being an anti-racist means? I kind of feel like it's it's self-evident, right? It's in the name to think that racism is bad. And I feel like if you're already not racist, isn't it logical to take the next step and say, well, I'm not racist because I'm not prejudiced and also I believe that racism is bad? I mean, are there many people in the country who personally aren't racist but think racism is good? I mean, does it truly break your brain, Joe Rogan, to think, oh my God, now I have to be anti-racist. So apparently it's not good enough that I myself am not racist, but now I also have to believe and act as if racism itself is bad.
yeah, you do. If you want to be part of polite society, you have to think and act as if racism is bad because racism is indeed bad. Do you think racism is good? I just... Why are you bitching about this, you fucking idiot? I mean, being an anti-racist, I feel like that's part of being a good person. Like, you can't be a good person if you think racism is good and you are racist. So, I mean, if you're not racist yourself, shouldn't it logically follow that you're not racist because you think racism is bad? I just, I don't get the hysteria over this bullshit. Oh my god, they expect me to not be racist, and and now I have to be an anti-racist, and then there's woke this, you know, uh, non-binary people exist, transgender people, my head's gonna fucking explode. It's okay, just, just calm down. Whew, take a breath, take a breath. Progress is happening, right? And I get that it makes you feel uncomfortable, and other people, historically marginalized groups getting rights might feel a little bit scary, but ask yourself, why is this scary to you? Why is all this progress scary to you? You can look back a couple of decades and see that all this progress that we made was good. So can't you also try to rationalize this situation and think maybe I'm like the bigots of the past. Maybe I, right now, resisting progress when it comes to LGBTQ plus rights, maybe I'm kind of going to be viewed in the same way we viewed the bigots of the past today. Can't you, can't you do that? Well, no, because that would require you to think and use brain cells that still function, which none of these two dipshits have. But either way, I just feel like, how do you listen to this? I actually looked at the Joe Rogan subreddit and even they were like, okay, I'm, I'm a couple of hours in and it's not going anywhere. There are a lot of people that kind of checked out of this conversation. If you're losing your own fans, then maybe you should start to bring on people who actually are intellectually curious and not just reactionary dipshits, Joe. I'm gonna come. Do not come. 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 Come.